So a bit of a sideways trading on the NSC today, still below 4,000. Uh, that seems to be very much the status quo at the moment. Uh, oh, yes, it is. And I think uh, most of that is probably related to the fact that uh, the information coming out doesn't seem to be exciting uh, investors uh, very much. And of course, uh, the factors that have been dampening the market are still generally much at play. All right. Obviously, a lot of people were anticipating Safaricom's results yesterday. Now we've got time to digest them. They haven't done particularly well. Profits down about 12%. Yes, uh, but by and large, I would say <clears throat> the market had generally factored this into their expectations. And uh, we, we actually saw that in the trading session today where, uh, based on the results, uh, we saw you know, the price going up uh, slightly during the trading session, but then it closed the day basically flat. So it was, the price was unchanged from yes yesterday, which more or less uh, implies that uh, investors had by and large expected a dip in profits. All right, let's talk about their strategy going forward because a lot of things are at play here. There's the growing competition from companies like Airtel and Orange, particularly Airtel. There's the regulator that really wants to support the um, smaller operators and removing barriers of entry by making concessions on licensing of things like 3 and 4G, for instance. There's the tariff cuts. So where else are they supposed to really recover their revenues and try to boost their margins, the Safari Cop? Well, I would say the position looks a bit challenging, but uh, in terms of uh, their prospects, I would say on the voice, on the voice side, uh, there's definitely going to be some pressure, uh, especially given the price reductions that we've, ze we've seen since uh, August last year and intense competition arising after that. Uh, but I would say what seems to be on their side is uh, strongly the money transfer service M-Pesa, which is still growing very, very fast. I think currently uh, their numbers went up to 13 million, which is about 60% of their total subscribers uh, in the network. And then, of course, uh, there's also data, which apparently still uh, has a lot of room for growth, uh, bearing in mind that uh, penetration currently at the Internet level is about 15%. Mm -hmm. So if you look at those two segments, other than voice, uh, they still have a lot of uh, space to grow their business. All right, for those who are interested in uh, either the telecoms stocks or some of the service-related stocks, um, what would you advise as a, as a buy at this moment? Uh, well, at the moment, uh, Safaricom more or less would still be a good buy at current prices. Uh, but then again, one would probably need to have a medium-term outlook given the factors that are still playing out in the industry. And uh, by and large, the price wars or price reductions are expected to you know, uh, even out uh, in the short term. And uh, that might probably bring stability to their earnings and you know, uh, to some extent uh, might probably bolster their, their, their revenue position and enable them to continue growing thereafter. All right, let's move beyond Safaricom and let's talk about other uh, companies within the market today. Scan Group closed 50%, uh, or rather 50 cents rather, uh, up higher on its price. Talk to us about that because we do know, you know, when the market was really buoyant last year, a lot of these um, media stocks, these advertising stocks were, were really a thrill for, for the investor. Oh yes, I think uh, last year was, a, was, was an exceptional year in the sense that uh, most companies across the board were, you know, were, were spending quite well in terms of uh, you know, marketing related expenses. Uh, but this year there are likely to be some challenges. But I think what is probably informing uh, the performance of, of uh, Scan Group is probably because of their uh, recently revealed strategy of increasing their reach in, in, you know, in the, in, on the continent. And uh, that perhaps at uh, the entry into new markets and uh, new acquisitions, since they're already very, you know, quite uh, significantly cash rich, is probably what investors are banking on. Otherwise, I think as far as the local market is concerned, other than the big players who, you know, uh, generally tend to hold uh, advertising spend, mm -hmm. uh, the rest of the market looks a bit soft. So their growth most likely uh, prospects will come from outside the country. Financials accounted for a lot of the day's trading today, about 67% of shares that were traded today. People were interested in CFC Stambic. They were also interested in Pan-African Holdings by way of selling, that is. Um, just what do you make of financial services at the moment? Because we are due to have uh, an insurer listing in early 2012. Um, we are seeing the banks aggressively expanding into the rest of East Africa, although the blue chips are regarded as fairly rich, though. 
Uh, in the case of Pan-African insurance, it's mainly a case of profit taking. Uh, the shares uh, recently went ex bonus and ex dividend after declaring a very generous uh, bonus of one share for everyone held. And I think uh, most of the uh, investors who had gotten in a bit earlier uh, looking at uh, are still taking out their profits. So there's, there's probably not so much uh, adverse uh, reaction to that. On the side of uh, CFC Stanbic Holdings, I think people are basically looking at the whole uh, entity and you know the, the various, uh, the various uh, components mm -hmm. included there. So I think there's a, there's a lot of expectation about the performance of uh, the, you know, the holding company, and that might be what is uh, pushing up the, you know, the, the, share, the share price. Okay, so Sini is up 4.5% today. Now, I know that it's quite a worrying scenario going forward with droughts in parts of Kenya, inflation rising, and what's going to happen to some of the agro processors who really are the drivers of foreign exchange earnings for Kenya? Uh, interestingly, the case for Sassini seems to be a mixed blessing in the sense that uh, on the side of tea, there's a report that came out that uh, tea prices have generally been on the decline. But again, on the side of coffee, there's, a, there's another report that came out that was extremely optimistic about uh, the outlook for coffee and stating that uh, you know prices have currently hit uh, an all-time high, I think last experienced in 1977. So when you factor the, the, you know, the consequences to Sassini's uh, uh, revenues going forward, I think uh, there's a likelihood that, they, are that they, they might be able to sustain their performance uh, regardless of, uh, or rather despite the, the, the drought condition and expected drop in their, in their production levels.